What's going on guys? My name is Matthias. I own my own YouTube studio. We make content for you, like Dope or Nope. So that shows kind of my livelihood. So it's rather terrifying when you're at the risk of losing it. Yesterday, I got an eviction notice on my door for the studio. And then I find out that it was Gary who pulled the strings to make this happen. Gary Reynolds. All I know about him is he someplace high in the government pulling strings, right? You might be asking me, why does this dude care about a lowly YouTuber? He doesn't. He cares about what came into my possession. About a year ago, I found a substance we now know as the Absolate. And we know this substance is incredibly dangerous. Gary tried to blackmail me to gain access to the Absolate. He wants the Absolate, who knows why? Typical government crap, I don't, you know, like taxes. But here's the thing, I don't have the Absolate. It was stolen. It was stolen the same day my friend Deb was murdered. And Gary knew about that before us, making Gary Reynolds a top suspect for Deb's murder. Oh yeah, and also the guy that's about to shut down my entire business. Speaking of which, Question of the day for you guys down in the comments below. What would you do if someone was trying to keep you quiet? I need a little help in the suggestions. What would you do? <laughs> Stay to the end and I'll read the uh, answers to the last question of the day. So forgive me if I'm just a little bit on edge during this video. One of the many reasons I decided to lift my spirits with some hilarious memes from you guys. All right, so. Got a little bit of time to spare, finished my stuff. I thought I'd go through your theories, hopefully get some laughs here because, you know, all day's been a bit of a drag. You know what I mean? When you're waiting for something and it's like hanging over your head. I've got a little bit of time left before I'm gonna make the call. I've decided to make the call. The call, meaning call Gary Reynolds himself. He gave me till 4 p.m. today to make my decision if I'm gonna stop uploading content or get evicted. Yeah. Kind of a jerk move if you ask me, Gary. I got an idea of what to say and I don't want people to talk me out of it, so you're gonna have to stay tuned. I think it also depends a little bit on how he approaches the situation, he being Gary. So until then, let's look at some memes and theories. So I'm on Reddit right now. We got a Reddit in case uh, all you newbies don't know this. It's Matthias Submissions. Send your theories, send your finds and discoveries and send your memes here. And for all of you complaining last time that I was like, oh my God, it was all memes and he didn't look at theories. <laughs> Start putting theories on Reddit then, huh? And start actually putting some good theories so they get upvoted. I'm just literally sorting by top this week, all right? So relax. Make some good theories and maybe people will upvote them. Complainers. Here we go, here's a, here's a bit of a theory. Y'all, he was right behind you. No, stop. What? What am I looking at? Bruh, that's not the same car. <laughs> that's a forerunner, dude. When you've looked at the Mountaineer as much as I have, you can tell it a mile away. 350 of you thought that was the Red Mountaineer. That's literally just a red SUV. In the audience's defense, the Mountaineer would spook about anyone. It's this old SUV from the defunct company of Mercury that showed up abandoned behind our studio. Since then, we've caught this thing following us, appearing in different places, and most recently appearing in brand new, back out in the original spot it first appeared in. We don't understand how, and now any red SUV, heck, any red car triggers all of you guys into a frenzy. I bet I'm not the only one that saw this. That's a Toyota 4Runner, <laughs> not a Mountaineer. I thought it was him until I took a screenshot. Yeah, obviously, if you see right away and it just zips past, I could see you getting confused. But if you actually were to like pause like I did, you could see that's a 4Runner, not a Mountaineer. But everyone sees it's a, it's a Toyota, so it's not just me. Scott left his briefcase. Yeah, we went through it. Uh, check out that episode. That episode was actually wild. There was DVD footage of Scott in a Syntec lab having a conversation with Xander. Who did he say Xander was? I forget. Maybe just like an assistant or a bio scientist. I don't know, bro. But yeah, that was a trip. We didn't catch that at first. Don't smoke, kids. It's underkill. Smoking rate drops to 0%. <laughs> don't do drugs, kids. The only type of people that need drugs are the people that need help forming their own vision. But me, I don't need help. My vision is powerful as is. Stay, stay, you stay. <laughs> Matt, 360 camera, vlog camera, the rig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. That 360 camera is kind of dope. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it actually worked out because I wasn't paying attention to filming that encounter with Scott. It actually worked out. But let's see what everyone else thinks about this. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> oh, yes. Cameras have feelings. 
Up, dude. <laughs> I hate the new blog style content. Imagine if we were making a blog. Hey guys, I've just I've just decided to take this whole thing into a blog format, all right? So you can read my blog <laughs> whenever you want. It really do be like that though. The subreddit according to Matt. Theories, memes. No, that's the subreddit according to you because you need to, literally person who's uploading meme. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is not lost upon me. Deb Syntec office. Yo, that's trip. Soroxa made this 3D. This isn't actually that far off from the 20 year old hidden office we actually found in our studio that belonged to the same Deb. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Is that Deb in like a underground lair of Syntec? That's scary. Don't cry Deb. Yo, whoa, this is, where is this place? <laughs> What is that, a cigarette he's smoking? <laughs> he did have a, a pack of Marlboro. Bro, what kind of company names their company Marlboro? Marlboro. Stupid. Change your name. Interesting. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, I'm having to believe you right now because that briefcase is literally playing zippity doo all, all over my campus. Project 863 Spire unofficial trailer by Squall232. What this? Uh-oh. This is scary. It's very scary. It's good, guys. It's been a week since I did that thing that angered everybody. <laughs> oh, he just you. laughs. <laughs> Nelson, you weirdo. Someone literally painted all over downstairs. Blue. This is such a well cut trailer. Shut up! No! No! Yo, I love that. Can I take that now for Spellbound? Holy cow. Cool, that's our new intro, guys. Thank you, Squall, for doing God's work here. Oh my word, you are so talented. What the heck? I know season three already ended, but I just wanted to recreate the scene where Ben is finally free from mind control. It was such a powerful scene, I couldn't resist. Always hope you enjoy. Yeah, Ben, you're free. That's dope art. I like those clouds. It was a super windy day that day. Just like straight up woke up and it felt like the world was ending. It was so windy. I asked my mom to theme my Easter egg. My Easter egg hunt. <laughs> I asked my mom to theme my Easter egg hunt around Project 863. So she got me stuff from her fan store. <laughs> so cool. Wait, stop. <laughs> Cat when the fan showed up. That's the guy. <laughs> my cutie little girl. The regret still lingers. That's really cool art, but it does. That's wild, Emiko. How did I know it was Emiko? I didn't even see, but I knew it was Emiko. And for those of you familiar, this is not an Emiko fan channel, okay? Okay, maybe it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. Theories. Great Scott, a bowl of peppermints and other theories. Today we discussed with our fellow researchers what we've seen on the latest episode. As we did, some strange details came to light. Is this really Scott Cleric? If Scott would have been from between 1028 and 1992 and 2003, Scott Cleric, according to his data and our best guess, was about 34 when he started at Syntec. He should be around 63, 64 now. This guy looks more like how Scott should have looked when Syntec started. <gasps> yeah, see, right? Scott started at Syntec right here. Yeah, I forgot. Was that in the was that in the files? This is getting weird, guys. Something doesn't add up. How was Scott asking for Wesley when in his car the memo said Wesley was dead? Did the memo say Wesley was dead? I don't think it explicitly said that. No, maybe that makes sense. Among other things, why do both Ben and Scott look too young? What was in Lice blood at Syntec? Neither look their supposed age. 63, 64, 63, 64. Gary Reynolds is supposed to be 85 years old? Stop. Start date. Two 1085. I'm assuming this right here, this 49, is a guess. He could have probably been a lot younger unless it said date of birth somewhere. But I don't know if we have a date of birth from Gary Reynolds. Some theories here. Timelines are crossing. Scott looked and acted genuinely confused. He didn't know who Matthias was or Spellbound or anything related to YouTube. He asked for Wes, Deb, or Autumn. Are we being pulled into Syntex timeline or is Syntex pulling into ours? That's an interesting theory, but it's trippy. Someone is being controlled. We know that there are many passives out there. That's true. We know someone can be mind controlled if they are activated individually like Matthias was. When the spire was put into passive mode, did this open the door for Scott and Wesley to take control? Is this one of the passives turned active being controlled by Scott? Wait, why would Scott be controlling right now? That doesn't make any sense to me. As far as I understand things, you can't control anything that's passive. 
it needs to be active, but maybe I'm tripping. What has repeated so far? November 24, 2020, April 4th, 2022, opening the safe, right? Deb sends a letter and the safe opens the TS5 key. In this safe was an emulator. Yes, those both repeated. So far, someone breaks in and steals something that belongs to Syntec. This individual, I'm assuming it was Ben, and this time someone broke in and stole the Absolate. A Mercury Mountaineer is discovered parked in the same spot as last time. 155 opens it and so does this key. Yes, both those things happened again. It's like straight up, everything's duplicating. What is repeated? So far, we are trying to solve another murder. That's true. There's a lot more things repeating than I thought. Yep, and this repeated as well. The key in season zero, episode six, we caught someone moving the abandoned car. 9.17 a.m. on this day, the Mountaineer drove behind Red Base a few months before the team discovered it. Do we believe he was the one who drove the car two years ago? Bro, that's a trip. I thought it was Ben driving the car two years ago or the stalker. The key, season zero, episode 27, he stole the abandoned car. So he stole the abandoned car. Guys, guys, he's getting into the car. The events were different right like what a trip he stole the car again thanks to everyone who contributed some great theories y'all over to vodka <laughs> <laughs> because why not? Scott Cleric, biochemist, just a confused guy overall. This is beautiful art. Can't remember if I saw this or not. Up duty. Sam, February 2021. If I see another Red Mercury Mountaineer, then I'm done. <laughs> 2022. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> An unusual amount of Luna memes. The subreddit. <laughs> Squatting Buffalo. Awesome. One day, Squatting Buffalo, you're going to need to stand up, take credit for your work instead of just squatting. <laughs> I know, I know, bad joke. Mini Deb diorama. Whoa, what a trip. It's like the office under the stairs. You did such a good job. Holy cow. And it's so cool you could just kind of like put it anywhere and take it anywhere. It's like a mini diorama. You know I love mini things. Oh, that's so cool. And like this whole thing is like the Syntec lunchbox. Impressive. I thought I'd share this. No one. Absolutely no one. Matt at 3 a.m. I don't need sleep. I need answers. <laughs> With my suspect board. Guys, don't make fun of me. Help me. Emmy Kuderu, how is that possible? Yeah, I know. I say that too much. Scott waiting for Wes and or Deb to message him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Just wait. That's too sad. Scott, I was here yesterday. I work here. Can you call Wes or Deb? I'm Scott. My name is Scott. A fan? Ooh, a little animation thingy. Residual art from last season. Oh my goodness. I don't like it. I don't like that at all. My nightmares. Chloe. Wait, what? Yeah, trippy. Because I, that wasn't me looking at that. That was Nelson. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't remember seeing her name anymore. It wasn't me. A fan walked into my studio and wouldn't leave. All of subject four. <laughs> Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> Back to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> How Scott lost the 863 team. Yeah, no kidding. How else, dude? Like, he just vanished. Me waiting for the new video. <laughs> Stuffing popcorn in your mouth. How Scott got away. The Mountaineer went here. No, it didn't. You can see it didn't. It went past the sign. This inlet is not a street. You can see, but he's going down a street. He's not, like, driving up. And also, he's like, drives behind the sign here. And this, this little area right here that I recognize is not behind the sign. The sign's right here. That's not correct. No, 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 no. I've watched this footage too many times, guys. Too many times. We went into the right one. Logical explanation. We can't trust the Nest Cams. If you recall, Nelson was able to fake Nest Cam footage. That's true. But I was watching that back, and every time Nelson faked the cameras, if you go and play back, he downloaded it, and then altered it, and then showed it. But I didn't download it. I just pulled it up while it was still on Nest. Scott is a precious cinnamon roll who can, oh, now we have Scott Simps. <laughs> I want to see it grow up healthy, strongly agree. I want to tell my friends and neighbors about it, strongly agree. I love having a, a new street tree. I will protect it, strongly agree. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, wait, what? It's been a while since I posted a piece, but this one took a while. Oh my goodness, this is so cool and creepy that I'm on the tree. Auntie Deborah, old man Nelson, <laughs> Phantom X. Oh man, this is actually really cool though. Look at that. Character portrait of Scott. Well done. The Mega Machine. Guys, I still haven't seen super great suggestions. I want to see super great suggestions. I'm going to pick one and we're going to do it to my new Mega Machine <laughs> soon. Yeah, <laughs> 2002 Ford Explorer, 2000 Toyota 4Runner, <laughs> 2003 Mercury Mountaineer. <laughs> Seriously though. Yo, this is cool. Oh yeah, we're chilling. Who cares, dude? Who cares, dude? Everywhere I go, I see his face. Is that a Mountaineer? <laughs> As I burned through time distracting myself from the impending call, I couldn't avoid it any longer. 
Okay, guys, it's getting to be that time. I'm gonna collect the team and then I'm gonna. Ah! I'm gonna call Gary. I'm gonna call Gary. Let's do it. Y'all, y'all ready? Barely, but yeah. You think it'll even matter? <laughs> I don't know what he's gonna have to say about why he's doing this. My concern is that it's just gonna go through anyways because we don't even have what he wants. Like, my guess is he's shutting this whole thing down because he wants the absolute. Yeah. And. We don't have it. If we lose this space, who knows what else we're gonna lose. True. We might lose this chaotic life. Um, you know, it's look possible. On the positive side. I mean, so much four. Okay. <clears throat> I gotta move though. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, have, I have a move up my sleeve. You have a move. I have a move up, up my sleeve. Sleeves. Up these leather sleeves. How can you fit a move in there? <clears throat> we found some stuff on Gary and Deb's apartment. Deborah, you think you can just run away after what you did to me? Did you think I wouldn't be able to use my resources to find you? I thought you were more intelligent than that. What you did at Syntec is long and expansive. It's something you'll never escape from, no matter how far you run or how deep you hide. I'm gonna use that. Okay. I'm gonna use that. Just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in here. I won't shut the door, just in case someone comes in and just like starts being loud or something like that. Okay. I can, I can shut this door because I don't want to risk it. Are you waiting for someone else to call? Never. Matthias. I'm assuming the only reason you're calling is because you saw my proclamation for your studio. That, or you decided to hand over the absolute to me. Yeah, pretty, pretty hard to miss, man. Uh, you feel good about yourself? Strong arming uh, a landlord to uh, force a small business owner out of their, uh, their property just because we're wrapped up in all this? Well, it doesn't matter, because I don't care, man. I care, okay, obviously. But at that exact second, he didn't know that. Does this get me an edge? I'm burning through all my cards pretty quick here. <laughs> I'm gonna keep uploading. I'm gonna keep uploading. I'm not gonna stop uploading. And everything we find, we're gonna keep putting online. Because I got a feeling this isn't gonna stop no matter what. It will be difficult for your minions and Subject 4 to continue to help you if your studio is shut down. Since you've declined my request, that's exactly what will happen. Now it was time. His threat seemed pretty real, like he was right on the edge. Time to play my final hand. If this doesn't work, time to pack, I guess. No, I, I don't think it will, actually. Not when you hear what I have to say. I doubt it will be anything of use. How about the fact that I just found evidence that ties you to Deb's murder? Nothing to say. You used your access to all whatever records you got access to, and you sent letters to Deb's address where she was murdered. You knew where she was. Right now, I only know of three people that do, right? So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna keep digging, okay? We're going to solve this murder, and if you're in the way, we're gonna dig that up, and we're gonna put you on blast. How about that? That was it. That was my hand. You see, it didn't add up. He didn't threaten to evict us for the absolute. In his letter we found yesterday, he wanted us to stop uploading. If we keep digging, I'm sure we would pull up something really nasty. You got some real nasty secrets, Gary. Fine, fine. I see we have reached an impasse. Is it an impasse, though? What kind of deal? In exchange of information, I know the absolute was stolen. I've been watching your videos to keep myself updated with your whereabouts. So he does know the absolute was stolen, and he still threatened us. This could have gone bad quick, but he still wants the absolute. But that's not something I can find, not even with all the resources in the world. Syntec is very good at keeping experiments like that hidden. So what, we're the only ones that can find it or something? So you want us to find it? I don't buy it. Guy with all these government connections can't locate this item? Syntec isn't even around anymore. The company went out of business years ago. Something doesn't add up. I will cut the eviction and give you the information you need. 
In exchange, you will deliver the absolute to me when you receive it. Failure to do so will not bode well for your company. How can I trust your information is good? Especially after what just happened. You threatened me. I don't even care about this kind of stuff. I'm trying to solve Deb's murder. And I have information that can lead you down the right path. You don't have anyone else but myself to help you. As much as I don't want to partner up with Scary Gary, <laughs> he's right. I'm running out of options here because I'm running out of friends. I mean, I, I still got you guys, right? Hit that like button for standing up to Scary Gary, am I right? Took some cojones. Fine. Fine. We'll take the deal. Good. You've already heard of a patient named Chloe, yes? She was experimented on heavily at Syntec. So much so that she's required assisted living since she left just to do basic tasks. And? She constantly tried to sue Syntec, specifically Deborah, for what they did to her while she was in their care. Her losses were relentless. And I'm sure she was getting desperate near the end. So you're telling me that she had a motive? Where's Chloe now? Uncertain. But your new friend might know. Scott? We don't have a way to contact him. That is all that I am at liberty to tell you. You want a path to look into who murdered Deborah? Find Chloe. Fine. Did you make a deal? I made a with deal. With the government? <laughs> with Gary. So I doubt other people know he's making these deals. What about Chloe? He said that she was experimented on heavily, and now she needs assisted living. Oh. And he said she was getting desperate. So she wants revenge. Sounds about right. It's not far off from what we kind of guessed before, right? So Chloe has motive, if we can confirm that that is actual fact, because I wouldn't put it past Gary to just lie straight to my face. Oh well, yeah, I mean, does Chloe have the means to blast someone away with whatever she is? Yeah. I don't know what way. happened to her though. I don't know why she needs assisted living. You know what I mean? It could be a variety of different things. Also, well, Deb was like the only person there that was like actively trying to stop the experimenting. Not according to Scott. According to Scott, the man that randomly showed up at our studio one day, Deb was going too far with her experiments with Chloe. Well, right? but still, if if all that Chloe saw was the face of who, you know, was doing the experimenting, I don't think she's, she's, she's going to care. Confused. And I haven't seen a lot of logs from Spire from Deb. What we have seen so far is Scott trying to stop Deb from yeah. experimenting on Chloe. Yeah. And so, I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping he's going to send those docs over. Um, We'll see. So where's Chloe now? That's the big question. Where's Chloe now? Before I show you what happens next in this crazy story, I'm gonna read some of your comments from yesterday's question of the day. Yesterday's question of the day was a bit of a heater. I'll, I'll give you that. The question was, do you think the government covers up murders. Here's what you said. I most definitely think that the government covers up murders. We already know from previous files we've ever seen that some of the info is redacted. This shows the importance of this case. I would watch out though because Gary admitted that Deb was dead and if he is guilty that could mean he doesn't see you all as a threat or it could mean you're next. That's a scary thought. Thank you for that. Question of the day. Absolutely. Many people have theorized the government covering up murders that they do. For example, some people believe that Prince, singer artist, was killed by the government but was covered up to look like a suicide. Oh my goodness. So it's very possible that Gary, who was part of the government, murdered Deb and covered it up. Is the sky blue? This being a government-funded backed project, it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that they are trimming and hiding loose ends. Be careful and tread slowly. I would not put it past GR to make more personal threats. Luckily that worked out. I probably wouldn't have done it if I read this comment first. You, you just spooked me. <laughs> the thing that scared me the most was the mustache. I didn't think Gary had a mustache. What are you talking about? 
Yes, they most definitely can. I was reading a book about saboteurs from Germany during World War II, and when one of them got cold feet and turned himself in and ratted out everyone else, they were put into a military court and no one was allowed in. Yikes, that's spooky. They definitely cover up murders. After seeing a lot of the evidence with missing pieces, it leads me to believe that they are keeping certain things away, possibly things that could be of huge help to the team. The government indeed does cover up murders. They can do it for multiple different reasons. If it's unsolvable or if it's been open for too long or if it involves something that involves them. Now I'm going to read some of your theories from the past video. Theory about the absolute. The person who could have stolen the absolute isn't on the bad side. Hear me out. Guessing by the thumbnail, Gary is shutting down their studio for the absolute, which was stolen from them a day ago. This would make the person who stole it good, I guess. Maybe they took it for safekeeping. If Nelson's assistant, Autumn, was alive, she could have done it. Or if Kendall was alive, Deb might have asked her to take it and store it safely. Could have been Deb herself as well, since she knew she was going to die the next day and she could have come in and stole it. That's a really interesting theory. Something seems off. I feel like the neighbors were pressured into making these complaints to evict you guys, and then someone takes over the units and possibly ends Project 863. Do not give up. We have come a long way to turn our backs now. I am not giving up as you saw earlier. So basically, this means you have a lead now. He wouldn't be all over you guys if you weren't onto something. We all need to start looking back in everything we've found. See if we're missing anything. I think we're on the right track, and I think GR is getting scared. Scary Gary? More like scaredy Gary. This goes to show you that a small trim could really add plus 30 years to your looks. Whew, that spooked me out big time. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for me to show you what happens next. I just got an alert. Gary actually sent us some documents. These are Chloe's attempts at suing Deb. I got an email from John Doe. 